the perspective, I, I agree with, with both of these folks, and I think the perspective that I can add is the volume of authors who come to us and say, help us build our online presence, help us um, you know, create that lifeline to our readers. And so I think that the, the value we bring them is we're teaching them where are the search engine optimized windows in your Facebook page, how to you know, create exclusive content just you know, for people who like your page, how to build a reveal tab. And I, I find that a lot of the authors that come to us at first are sort of intimidated by this. And so the value we bring them, I think, is holding their hands, sometimes co-administrating their page, helping them get set up, creating their feeds from their blog to Facebook and Twitter. So I think we're creating, you know, we're you know, definitely bringing them some industry expertise, some technical expertise, and some general you know, cheerleading and hand-holding in the process. And I just think we can all agree that nobody can do anything alone. You know, we all can benefit from having an editor. We can all benefit from having somebody to guide us in our communication. So um, oftentimes um, people ask me, oh, you know, Borders is closing, or oh, are you worried about your job? And, you know, I, I'm not. You know, it's a very exciting time. I think that uh, we can help our authors innovate. We can help our authors communicate and um, especially personalize. Everything is moving in the direction where, you know, I think Apple did a really great job of this. It's the iPhone. It's, it's the personal experience that people want from their book. And um, I think that, you know, speaking from a large publisher, we can uh, utilize our expertise to um, provide that guidance, that needed guidance. I think the only thing I would add on, on top of everything else that's been said is that within our business, the, the writer is not the most important. I, obviously, they're very important. We, we, we hire them for their expertise, their, 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 the way they can write, the way they can research. But what actually sells our books is our brand. And that's where someone who's doing self-publishing, who's just you know saying, oh, I'm using travel as, a, as an example. I'm going to just, I'm not going to work with the publisher anymore. I'm just going to write my own guide to Greece, and I'm going to put it out there. Well, it's just going to flow. Um, no, nope. someone, it, it's not a trusted brand, and uh, a lot of people with certain categories want to know that they're buying something from a trusted brand, someone that they recognize, and, and it doesn't, doesn't always have to be a brand, it can also be a company, so take, for example, Josie Bass, I think Josie Bass is a great company, and uh, someone can see that on the, you know, the copyright page, oh, Josie Bass published this, or Macmillan published this, or Simon Schuster published this. That's something that actually works in an author's favor as well. Yes, in some categories. In some, some categories, category, yeah. Certainly in travel books, yeah. And that, that brings up the whole question of, of a creative publicist or editor. Uh, it, traditionally, we get our own ideas for books and we go to the writer. So, you know, particularly in the category of travel, mystery books, sometimes I've, we've initiated, I've initiated certain mystery series. And even in uh, YA books, you know, you can see a, a, a hole in the market, you can go for it. So there's hopefully still room for that kind of innovation. So let me uh, now ask the, uh, there's a lot of wisdom in this room. I see looking around a lot of people with many years of experience and many ideas or case histories of their own or questions. So I'd like to open it up now and ask the, um, the audience to um, chime in. Uh, Yes, in the back. Could you um, speak loudly? Um, my name is Stacy. I'm a big city life publisher. I just I'm always so sort of bored by the pricing method, especially the general at the end who started about the startup pricing article in the South Africa in 1999. Obviously, we're all going, you know, we're, we're in that situation now. We're doing e books, trying to figure out how much a book should be priced, and we're all under this pressure to be valued at. Sustainability, did you say? It's a huge issue. And how do you maintain the consumer? How, how do you use um, maybe parts of books or parts of books to market? Um, but just a whole company where it's really hard to make sense of the market and how to make sense of it. And I don't know. I mean, I understand this is the direction that things are going, and there's definitely a cheapening of what we see, what we value. Um, or we're, we're demanding to pay less. Um, and how that affects the rest of the industry is just, that's very problematic for me. 
volume. <laughs> you start um, you're, you're really at the uh, a book publisher yeah hi um, you know we so far um, we've done a very limited run of these types of promotions and we're doing them for a limited time and I think that's how we're able to do it and get away with it and we're primarily right now relegating it to backlist books so frontlist book coming out this fall we're gonna um, make the, the, the backlist title by that same author um, incredibly low price. We haven't determined the exact price yet. Probably $1.99 for two weeks leading up to on sale. Um, we'll create a new ISBN for it so we can turn it off after two weeks and you know, and we'll have some promotional material in that book to promote the new front list hardcover. And we'll do that for a limited period of time. So right now that's our experiment and that's how, you know, I think a lot of us we're you know, we're not original. I think we're, you know, trying things that other people are trying, but I think what's making it sustainable for us at the moment is putting a limited time stamp on it. Anybody here from a sales department? Sales, 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 sales? No. Yes. Can you speak to this issue of pricing? What, what, can you tell us who you are and who you work for? I'm Manuel Magruder. I'm the associate publisher at New World Library. And, you know, I, you know, I, I understand you know, what, what she's saying completely because, you know, the, 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 more, the more I see the short-term promotions, whether it's for 99 cents or 9 $199, I mean, there's def I have definite concerns about cheapening the product. Um, you know, have we have we done anything along these lines ourselves at this point? Not yet. Um, would we contemplate it in the future? Probably with the right book. From what I've been able to gather, you know, at, at, at this point, it's really you know where where it's the most effective is when you're taking an older book with a new book coming out in a genre fiction series or that sort of thing. You know, the types of books the New World Library does, where there's, you know, we, while we have authors that, that, you know, we're actively trying to acquire authors that publish the next book, the subject matter on it might be quite different than the previous book. And so, you know, giving away the previous book, is that really going to sell the, the new book? I, I, I don't have the answer to that. It's a rhetorical question. And I was just, I'm actually curious if there are other publishers in this room are, are up there who you know, are doing a lot in the nonfiction area and, and you know, what they're finding. Is well, before I, uh, uh, I'd like to give you my perspective for what it's worth. First of all, I don't think that this lower pricing will work for everything. It will not. I mean, there are certain categories of books, particularly nonfiction or academic books or professional books, where it just doesn't work, and it doesn't need to work because the market will pay more. It's really a question of what the market is looking for. On the other hand, in certain genre fiction, especially YA, romance, romance especially, uh, mysteries, sci-fi, para so-called paranormal, those genre writers, and I've met quite a few of them, they're, they are flourishing at $199, $299 because of the volume. It's just, you know, it's like if you sell a million and you get $2 a book, you've made $2 million on a 70% royalty through Kindle, you know, or through the, you know, Amazon book services. It works with those kinds of books. It may not work with literary poetry or, you know, other small, um, more specialized and less price conscious markets. So having said that, let me see what else anyone else here would like to say. Yeah. I just want to say a little bit about kind of <clears throat> Byliner's model there. It isn't so much to um, you know, create discount books. In fact, that's a concern of ours um, uh, when we're in, in uh, ebook stores other than Amazon because Amazon has set aside this Kindle singles category and they're policing it pretty carefully to make sure it doesn't become a dumping ground for just repurposed articles and senior, you know, PhD theses and stuff like that for 99 cents. Uh, they're looking for original content, and, and that's what we're focused on. And our, our belief is that um, there are some stories that don't need to be to take 10 hours to read, that don't deserve or need to be of book length. Um, and something our founder believed strongly and, and felt, you know, speaking with other writers, they're great stories sometimes that they felt, well, this is too much for a magazine, and but I'm not going to spend two years on it and make a book out of it, and yet I want to tell this story. <clears throat> 
uh, maybe because that's the length it needs or the urgency. In the case of William Bowman, uh, the goal was to you know, be able to tell the story relatively quick quickly while people were still aware of what was happening in Japan. Um, and not and write as long of a piece. We're actually at the high end of the Kindle. We're two ninety nine. Uh, 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 have been our, our first title. Summer. Who, summer. Can I interrupt? Who paid for Bowman's trip to Japan? We did. Yeah. yeah so we you did. made so a there, serious investment. We did. We did. That was yeah. Big we bucks. Did. There was an assignment fee there, and you know we hope to make it up in volume. <laughs> um, it is. It is good news that the margins are great on eBooks. Relative. You know there is no cost of production there, um, but you do need serious volumes to make this work and. And uh, I think we're all, you know, although ebooks are growing, they're not so enormous that you, you know this is just cash just pouring out of every one of these these titles. There's still some experimentation here on our part as well to figure out what works and how much to invest. Well, you're you're also filling a gap, uh, which we're all aware of, is that there, there are very few magazines that have the pages that and their circulation to survive. And a lot of the old magazines that would send people around to do stories don't exist anymore. You know, Time, Life, Newsweek. Uh, you know, even the, the magazine Esquire, they're just not sending out people to Japan to write a story. Only maybe the New Yorker, you know, bless their hearts. Uh, Alan, okay. can I add yes. one thing? Yes. So this is a place where I think publishers should take the lead from self-publishers. And this is about the audience for the particular book. So what self-publishers are doing, and what's so great about ebooks, is they're experimenting. What will their audience pay? So lots of people are changing up their prices every month and seeing what works till they find their sweet spot. And I feel that there's, a, no offense to anyone in the room, but there's a lot of rigidity within publishers when there needs to be more fluidity. Um, and just the, you know, to jump in and to start trying. And we, you know, the, I was just speaking to a woman named Robin Sullivan who started as a self-publisher, now has a small e-publishing business with science fiction writers. And you know, it's taken her a couple of years to figure out the pricing, but she's in her sweet spot. And now, uh, at least five of her authors are selling 10,000 books a month. Well, what's the price? Uh, I think the price is, uh, it, it's, I think it's up to 399 now. So she started at 199. And then she kept moving up. She found people were going to pay for that. So 399, 10,000 copies a month. Yeah. So it's science fiction. So genre, you know, the genre fiction is is easier.